Shareholder proposals in race relations, they go way back. Are they coming back strong? Today on Zippy Point. Quick Zips by Zippy Point. Quick and dirty. I'm Brock Romanek and I'm a big fan of you. When I explain to a lay person what shareholder proposals are all about, I often start by explaining that a shareholder with as little as $2,000 worth of stock can make a big impact in our society, in our world. To illustrate the point, I mentioned the unsuccessful shareholder proposal in 1951 sent to Greyhound to desegregate their buses. That, act, that one actually went to court, a pretty rare for a shareholder proposal. A year later, the SEC actually brought in the ordinary business exclusion, allowing companies to exclude proposals submitted primarily for the purpose of promoting general economic, political, racial, religious, social, and similar causes. The narrower ordinary business exclusion that we know of today came to be by virtue of some amendments to Rule 14A8 in 1972. So by today's standard, that desegregation proposal would have been on the Greyhound's ballot. So after the 1972 rule changes, shareholder proposals began to put pressure on those companies still doing business in South Africa in an effort to end apartheid, and they just came roaring in. So this web page from the Interfaith Center for Corporate Responsibility, which has been setting in shareholder proposals headed by Paul Neuhauser for <laughs> 50 years, mentions its first proposal along these lines that was sent to General Motors way back in 1971. Now with the Black Lives Matter movement moving worldwide full steam ahead, full force, we should be seeing quite a spate of race relations proposals this proxy season. This morning's Star column by Jackie Cook notes that 14 resolutions were voted on last season before the Black Lives Matters took that giant leap forward in a number of categories. So they might come in the form of tackling forced arbitration when it comes to claims of racial discrimination, forcing employees to settle employment related claims via a company appointed mediator, hate speech and content policy enforcement, trying to amp that up, uh, the board level capacity for civil and human rights oversight, the impact of the environment, the health burden on low income and predominantly minority communities around certain plants, actual and potential human rights impacts associated with high risk products and services, all that kind of stuff. Jackie notes that overall these Proposals on the ballot last year were generally well supported, averaging 45% support with six of them receiving majority support. So this is all good stuff. So what do you expect this proxy season? Let us know. Mm -hmm.